Good day and welcome uh, to my presentation. My name is Rohan Ahmed and this is a presentation on my machine learning project video anomaly detection and classification for autonomous deep space robotics. In this presentation, we'll cover the five W's and how, um, essentially what, why is this project important? How did we solve the problem? What is the problem in the first place? And what is the future work? The motivation of this problem is the space industry. Uh, as we move further and further away from Earth in our space operations, we need uh, robotic systems and space systems that are more autonomous. One such project is the Lunar Gateway on which, the, on, in which Canada is contributing the Canada Arm 3. Uh, Canada Arm 3 will perform many of the same functions that Canada Arm 2 performed on the ISS, with the notable exception that uh, it will need to be a lot more autonomous because we will have, unlike the Canada Arm 2 where we have 24 hour communication, with Canada Arm 3, we will only have an eight hour window a week. And even then we will be fighting for bandwidth with other systems. So we need the uh, system to be very autonomous. In this regard, in this project, we will be developing a, or we developed a video anomaly detection and classification system. Essentially this, this model will run on board uh, the space station and monitor the videos and determine which ones are anomalous, which ones uh, detect something that's you know fishy, weird, something like a broken panel or a punctured uh, uh, punctured uh, uh, vehicle system, and let us know that that's an important video to look at. The data set we will use is an openly available uh, surrogate data set of uh, surveillance videos that was shot by uh, UCSD University of California San Diego, essentially uh, 34 training videos and 36 test videos of a camera mounted at a high elevation looking down at a pedestrian crossway. And any normal video is where you just have pedestrians and abnormal videos are where you have uh, non-pedestrian items and, and weird patterns of movement. Uh, this data was not enough to train our model, so we augmented our data and there's more detail in the paper by using something called stride length that so we combine not just linear, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five frames, but also one first frame, third frame, with fifth frame, things like that. The two models that, we're, that we looked at, the, the main one is the anomaly detection unsupervised model, which is a convolutional long short term memory autoencoder. And the other is the classification model, but we'll find out that we didn't actually use the model, we use a much simpler approach. So we've gone over what CNNs and LSTMs are in the course, so I'm not gonna go into detail, but in, for this project, we've essentially used the CNS to extract spatial uh, features and convolutional LSTMs to extract uh, spatial and temporal features within our video sequences. And then we use the autoencoder architecture to essentially take it as, an, as input, an input, input video and then reproduce that input video uh, as well as we can. And we measure the how well we think we did using a reconstruction score. This uh, diagram shows how we went about uh, doing this. So we first generated our, our encoder our autoencoder, then we trained it only on non-anomalous data, so only on videos that did not contain any anomalies. That made our model very good at predicting and, and inferring non-anomalous data. And then we run the same model for uh, inference uh, for data that is both anomalous and non-anomalous. And what happens is that we expect our reconstruction score, our confidence level, to be low for anomalous videos because that's something that our model didn't see in training and high for non-anomalous data because that is something that it's, it is seen training. So the key here are two things, the model itself and also the reconstruction score, just how we measure our confidence of how well the model is did, the model has done. And based on that reconstruction score, we can use, uh, we classify. So on the left side, we have the model, I'm not gonna go into detail, but essentially it's an autoencoder, as you can see with convolution layers, LSTM layers and a bottleneck. And on the right is how we calculate the reconstruction score I go into more detail in the paper, but essentially we get a confidence at the end here, uh, the S sub RT, which is how well we think we did. And then we input that into a classification model. We call it model because we use two approaches, a simple linear threshold where we just calculate the optimal value for this threshold, this line here, based on what gives us the highest accuracy. And we found that to be 8.87, gives us a 70% accuracy overall. So 30% are misclassified and 70% are classified correctly versus XGBoost. Now XGBoost is a well-known random forest ensemble tree learning method. Uh, but because our data set is not big, we only have 70 data points. There's just not enough data to train a supervised learning model. And so we get an accuracy of about 50%, which is essentially like tossing a coin. We might as well not look at the video, toss a coin and uh, we'll get, you know, the similar accuracy. So we go with the simple linear threshold. Results. So 
we run the we run the uh, the model on on all of the um, uh, data that we have. So the first case here was an anomalous case. So let me play this. And as you will see that as in the video, we see some non anomalous uh, movement, such as this bicycle and this uh, skateboarder right here, our score, our confidence score, reconstruction score goes down. That tells us that we've detected something that is anomalous. Compare that to a non-anomalous uh, video here on the right side, where all you have is pedestrians walking and you have just one guy, you know, sort of cut the corner there and you get a little dip. But other than that, our model is pretty confident that this video has nothing fishy, nothing anomalous in it. Uh, and so we can classify that correctly as non-anomalous. So we use unsupervised model for this anomaly detection. And then we use supervised model for, or we use a, in this case, a very simple linear threshold to classify. What we want to do in the future is improve our unsupervised model uh, find a better, a more accurate classifier, or at least a better data set that allows us our classifier to learn, and then apply this model on our synthetic space data set, uh, which is essentially ultimately the goal here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I think I went over by 30 seconds or so, but I think we should be good. I appreciate it. This course was, this course was a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys have fun too.